Hello, my name is Tony Jessup. I'm going to take a moment to review some Six Sigma improvements and a review of a lean sandwich shop. Um, so we're going to review the current issues, the cost of poor quality, process improvements and corrective actions, some control mechanisms that uh, suggest to be put in place and the potential savings if those were followed. So uh, the lean sandwich shop in Salt Lake City location has been experiencing a 10% rate of incorrect orders requiring a second sandwich, which obviously drives waste in the way of scrap uh, materials and wasted time. Uh, so the estimated cost of poor quality at this 10% rate is $120,000. Um, that's just this location. Um, and that doesn't include the impact uh, future business due to lost customers from that poor quality. Uh, we did take some time and get some surveys and some VLC voice of customer. Uh, after the review of those surveys and the customer feedback, it was determined uh, that some of the things that were most important to the customer were an accurate order that was delivered in prompt time and that it was still warm. So as we look deeper at that and uh, formulate a critical to quality tree, uh, it was identified that we need to have adequate staff levels to receive the order and complete the sandwich. Uh, we need an accurate order taking, taken, uh, whatever that might look like. We need an adequate stocking of ingredients uh, and we need the right level of ingredients, the right stock on hand, not too much, not too little. Uh, if we have too much, uh, the, the ingredients will spoil driving another issue, uh, not enough, and obviously we won't be able to complete sandwiches. Uh, the other thing that was identified that's critical is a toaster uh, that is capable of toasting a sandwich in 165 seconds. If it goes longer than that, then we're gonna have trouble meeting that um, 10 minute uh, delivery time that's requested. Um, and again, so finally, the order needs to be correct and delivered in 10 minutes or less. Um, so with that feedback, we we're able to go back and uh, as those sandwiches came in, we tagged them with a defect code. Um, as you can see from this Pareto chart, uh, a couple of the different defect codes that we saw uh, were a cold sandwich, incorrect dressing, spoiled toppings, wrong toppings, wrong sandwich, contamination, and spoiled protein. Uh, so with this Pareto chart, we can identify that if we correct the cold sandwich, and the incorrect toppings or incorrect uh, sandwich, then we can account for about 80% uh, of those uh, return sandwiches. So um, that's where we shifted our focus to. With that, we uh, put together a value stream map to review how often we're getting our ingredients, uh, as well as look at the tasks and how long they take. So the uh, meat and cheese come in every three days and then the fish, bread, and produce come in daily, uh, which looked to be pretty acceptable. Uh, one thing that was identified was that uh, the difference between task two and task three. Task two takes 15 seconds. Uh, task three takes 90 seconds. So there's pretty decent gap there. So there's a little bit of concern uh, on the work balance for each employee, um, as well as looking at the sandwich itself uh, delivering the sandwich and wrapping the sandwich. Uh, can we improve that at all? Can we combine some steps and add employees and then balance things uh, across more equally? So initially, current state, this is what the work balance, to, uh, work balance looks like. Uh, so with this, we were correct. Um, task two has a ton of idle time in between recording an order and uh, the protein. So we wanted to revise that and add task two to uh, task three uh, and then add a head count there. And so by doing that um, with the additional head count, we cut down that task time. Uh, additionally, we did combine task six and task seven uh, and we'll see what that looks like here on the next slide. So with those steps removed and the employees reallocated, uh, we kept our task times pretty balanced and all under 60 seconds, which is a good thing. So um, it removed th the uh, three employees from the process altogether, 
additionally, the throughput for the previous process was five. The TPH or throughput for this is 6.5. So definitely improvement if we can combine those steps. Uh, because we combined the steps, we had to take a look at our work cell design and potentially redesign it. So um, this is what we came up with. Um, I call it a, a swim lane or a lane design because it's got two different lanes. This was developed for uh, peak time in the day. Uh, so 12 to 1 lunchtime is the peak time for our demand. Uh, this layout will meet that demand. The ben other benefit to that is if we, as demand goes down throughout the day, we're able to shut down one of the lanes and uh, not have the same level of head count. So a benefit added there. Um, one thing to note is that the bread storage, meat storage, veggie storage is all close to the stations. There's refrigerators and coolers close by uh, for overflow of ingredients um, to keep them keep foot traffic down from going back and forth and restocking and such. Uh, so controls and countermeasures, uh, we'd add and on lights and a buzzer for toasting, which would provide an audio and a visual indicator. Uh, we had some task uh, observation throughout uh, the workday. So as we watched, we noticed that the employees running the toaster would either be doing something else or get distracted and uh, the toast the sandwich didn't always come straight out of the toaster uh, so adding an and on light and a buzzer both uh, would help uh, the the employee know hey the sandwich is done we've got to take it out uh, another thing to consider is a conveyor style toaster um, drawback to that is uh, cost some capital up front a little bit of investment up front. Benefit to it is the uh, it would reduce reduce that step by 10 seconds uh, on either side. 10 seconds to put the sandwich in, and 10 seconds to take it out and get ready to wrap. Um, also, would include a heat lamp uh, and add that at the delivery table so that as the sandwiches get done, they get put under a heat lamp and they get kept warm. So if there's any sort of delay and when the, the customer gets a sandwich uh, and when it's completed, uh, it stays under that lamp and less likely to get cool enough and, and dry that complaint. Um, to speak to or improve the improper ingredients or incorrect ingredients, we put together a standardized ingredient list and abbreviations for those uh, ingredients. Uh, this would help the person placing the order use the same abbreviation every time and the folks building the sandwich, uh, would, if they had any question on what it meant, they could look at their chart that's posted at each station and clarify if it was mustard, lettuce, whatever the case may be. Um, so that would help improve uh, the in incorrect ingredients from uh, those complaints. Uh, hourly audits would be put in place for produce, meat, and those ingredients that could spoil um, so we can maintain a high level of quality with those ingredients. And then finally, a Gemba chart would be uh, posted to review TPH uh, trends as well as open actions and issues that would be reviewed daily during the stand-up meetings. So expected savings from the process improvements and controls um, would be uh, in two areas. One, reduce scrap cost and reduce labor hours. So due to the process improvements, the reduced scrap cost uh, at 80% would be $96,000. The reduced labor hours would be 43,680 hours. Uh, of the old process versus 33,415 hours annually for the new process. So at $15 an hour, that's uh, just under $154,000. So all total reduced scrap uh, and labor savings is $250,000 for this location. And again, that's annually. So those are the process improvements and changes that we would recommend. Uh, hope you've enjoyed the review here and uh, our recommendations and hope you feel the same. Thanks for your time.